So we woke up this morning and we're surprised to see that our trees were getting chopped down. The city owns the trees in between the sidewalk and the road and apparently they're taking three of our big maples down. My wife and I were pretty upset about it, but you know what they say, when life gives you lemons, make something out of the logs. So that's what we're gonna do. So I asked these guys if they could leave the logs and it was like Christmas day for me after a funeral on Christmas Eve. This log's 30 inches. It's the biggest log I've ever had. Do you think I can move it with this thing or do you think this is more likely a murder weapon? Now I'm certainly no expert at moving logs and milling them. We've been having a lot of fun with it. We're learning a lot and you're just kind of seeing the process of me and my dad learning all about how to do this. Okay, we've secured two of the logs. I think it's all this trailer can take. We broke the winch, uh, but we got the logs in the trailer. I think we're good to go. Let's get these things to the mill. You'll uh, notice one of these logs was actually way too big to <laughs> fit on the mill. So we just got a little bit uh, creative and found a way to get it done. And <laughs> it was at this point that I started getting super excited about the way these logs looked and the awesome grain. Woo! For this project, the client specifically asked me for a console table to go behind the sectional couch. And <laughs> she has decorated our living room in kind of maybe a rustic boho style. The design happened really fast because I came up with the idea and pretty much the first thing I drew, <laughs> I just was ready to go. It's been about 10 months since we milled the logs. They've been outside drying. They're not completely dry, but I think they're dry enough that they won't be splitting and cracking once I get them to their final dimension. However, there were these light streaks running through the boards and I got a little worried about it because the grain seemed to be a little bit brittle and a little weaker than normal. In order to go with the kind of organic, rustic, natural textures and tones in the client's living room, uh, I decided to go with rammed earth. I've always loved the look of rammed earth. I've never seen any interior furniture using it, so that was my challenge. I've been saying I need to do it for a while, but I finally made a super janky crosscut sled for my table saw, and it worked out pretty good <laughs> making these miter cuts for this waterfall edge. Uh, so my wife, the client, no kidding, she said <laughs> this was her favorite project I ever made. So naturally, I'm going to have her do the voiceovers for the rest of this video. Yay! <laughs> so apparently he started off with this waterfall edge by putting both of these minor joints together, gluing it, oh yeah, making it look nice. Ooh, look, he got the grain to match up. He's just screwing it in. <laughs> Maybe, maybe I should help you with, these, with the voiceovers. What is this? What am I doing here? Uh, you are smoothing out the glue to make sure that waterfall edge is smooth. <laughs> yeah, it's called burnishing. If there's like a little gap on a mired edge, you can kind of press it down. And so it looks tighter than it actually is. Okay. That's probably enough. Obviously, these trees came right from our property. And I think that's super awesome having them go from our property to being used in our home. But I also wanted to source some local sand <laughs> for the rammed earth portion, just so I could have the sand, the stone, and the wood be from right here, basically in my backyard. We're going to the beach. Okay, I'm gonna try and collect some sand. So I'm gonna go out to where people won't miss it on the beach. So let's get sailing. All right, I think this is far enough out. What the heck is this? A thirst trap? Austin. <laughs> Maybe a, another load or so. Okay, now that I got all my uh, sand collected, let's get mixing. I think he stole it from an abandoned sand plant. Okay, now he's mixing the sand in the bucket, adding a little bit of color, 
Uh, there's also a little bit of concrete in there. Uh, this table does not live on sand alone. Cement. Oh, cement. Right. What do you think about these two test pieces I did? Uh, they look like ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I looked like a poo brownie, <laughs> personally. Uh, but it was pretty strong. I did two different kinds of mixtures. I did one that was a little bit more watery and the layers kind of blended together. It was so strong that the rock actually split in half when it broke. The other one was a little bit more brittle. After my experiments, I decided to do one part cement, three parts sand to two parts aggregate or stone. All right, now he's working on the form to build the rammed earth around. Uh, looks like quite the process. Look at that good Dalton! So I would love some feedback from you guys. Write down in the comments what you think I should do with the rest of the wood from this tree. Uh, there's a lot of it and I'd love to hear your thoughts. I've got the inside part of the form done and ready to go. I primed the bottom part. I left this so the top can come open. So after I compact a couple of layers, I can put some screws through here kind of as a reinforcement. So now I'm gonna build the outside of the form and get ramming. <laughs> this project turned out to be really heavy, like 150 pounds, and some of you won't like that, but I don't care. I don't want lightweight furniture. I want furniture that is terribly difficult to move, so my grandkids have to hire a crane to come drag it out of my house after I die. Got my form here, and I'm about ready to go. This is actually one of the most nerve-wracking parts because you just pound it in there and then hope it turns out okay. Whoa, no. I messed up a little bit. I needed like an extra quarter inch here in the corner, so I screwed these on. Hopefully it'll work and won't leave some weird lines or something on the finished product. Hey, is that my measuring cup? <laughs> no. no, baby. So one of the things I saw online said that when you're doing these mixes, you should keep your stones wet before you start mixing because they soak up water at a different rate than the sand and it can kind of mess up your mixture. So I've had these stones soaking for the last two weeks or so and now they smell like pond scum. They were really funky. That is my measuring cup. And did you put that back in the kitchen? I will. <laughs> I will, I swear. You better, <laughs> after you wash it. Okay. I made a fairly significant mistake and I'm trying to figure out how to fix it. I made this cap to go on the top and fit in here so I could put these screws in as we were going. I didn't think about the fact that I need to put screws in here and now I can't get the screws in to set this back on the top. Oh, no reason to be so sad. We all make mistakes. This doesn't need to be so depressing. <laughs> I'm just trying to use the music to draw out how my heart was feeling at the moment. I was really bummed. Honestly, I was. It will be okay, baby. And spoiler alert, it was in fact okay. Hey, uh, thanks for taking the form off without me. I didn't even get to see it. Well, it was cracking and I was really anxious to get it open because I was really worried about it. Wow. It is. Well, it turns out there might have been a reason they cut this tree down. There was some kind of boring bug in it and it was sick. And this lighter part that goes through it is a little weaker than normal. And I wanna make sure that before I put this in my house, all the bugs are dead and gone and out of there. So I'm gonna spray it with some chemicals and make sure that all the bugs are dead and it's not gonna damage the wood any further. Okay. I think you can change the music. It's really sad, and it doesn't need to be. Okay, let me let me turn that off. 
I like that our son is working so hard for you. It gives me hope for his future that he's going to be able to do a lot of different things. Let's hope so. <laughs> Polly, it's the beginning of the end. And now we're going to get to those final sweet shots. Uh, this is, like my husband said, my absolute favorite thing that he's ever made. Uh, the look of it is just stunning. I don't even think that the video does it justice. Also, Mama needs a new kitchen, so like, subscribe, and share. Although the rammed earth cracked, it actually adds a lot of depth to that side of the table, and what could have been just a flat shape isn't. So it gives it just a little something extra, so I like the imperfection of it. Well, I'm glad somebody likes it. <laughs> like I always say, things don't have to be perfect to be beautiful. Catch you next time.